Matt? What? <laughs> Hello guys, some of is arriving to your garden just in time for summer. Well, not for the British summer because it's absolutely horrible and that's why a device like this it's not particularly usable in my life right now right now because I don't even have a garden. However, I have neighbors and I've tested it for you. So what we've got today to talk about is the Sonoff Zigbee Smart Water Valve device. And to prevent you from flooding everything around, they also released this. This is a Zigbee water leak sensor. So those two devices are the subject of today's video. And I'm just going to quickly explain why I'm late with this video because that's something a little bit interesting. So let's start with the story. Usually when I receive some of devices, they send me a product, they tell me very little about it and I don't have access to websites to get more information. And that's fine because for the most part, I have no problem with this, but this time was slightly different. If you follow me for some time, you know that recently I reviewed Son of Zigbee Bridge U, which, let's face it, it was an eye host in disguise. And I'd strongly recommend you to check that video to understand the issue at hand. But, and this is a spoiler alert, that was also my downfall. As any sane person would have took the latest uh, Soul of Zigbee Bridge to test the latest products because I wanted to be relevant in my videos and show you all the cool tech that you can get right now. So that's what I did. And while I didn't have any problems with the water leak sensor, this device, the small smart water valve, wasn't working entirely as expected because yeah, I could control it, but it did not have any access to the water flow data, which this device can also supply you with. And I didn't know why. I mean, after all, the print was already uh, visible on the packaging and I should be able to use that feature. So if you pair this with the fact that I don't have a garden and it's very hard for me to test this device, I had to arrange my neighbor to help me out and do some silly stuff with him to make sure I test it properly. So when I went to test it, I didn't really have access to these features. I went back home and then there was a release date for Smart Son of Valve, to which I discovered that they do not support it fully yet on iHost. No mention of Zigbee Bridge U. Now, if you watched that video about Zigbee Bridge, you know that this is basically the same thing. It is, it says iHost in disguise, which makes sense that would inherit the same development delays as iHost. And by the time this is released, you're probably not going to even have a problem with this because both devices will be updated. Well, it did affect me and I'm slightly sour about it because it messed up my schedule. So what do you need to have to drive these devices? Well, the answer is Son of Zigbee Bridge Pro, which I also have and I've used that and suddenly everything was working as advertised and I had access to all features and I could test it, which I did. Went to my neighbor. Hi, Nick. Thanks for your help. This black box sets you uh, back $26.90, so just under $27, which isn't expensive and it does two things. It enables the water flow and it measures how much water runs through it, which is handy, especially if you have a garden and you want to maintain uh, watering level at all your plants and, well, not to kill them. I have a couple of plants in here, in the, but this is way overkill. I'm okay with the bottle for now, but once I've got a garden, then I'm probably gonna use this. I didn't open it because it's a Zigbee device and it's sealed and to be fair, it's, you're not going to do anything about it. Sooner or later, there's gonna be a support for Zigbee to MQTT or a home assistant and you'll be able to use it this way. So let's focus on the features. This comes in two different standards. You have a British pipe standard and the other one. Uh, if you know, you know. Check out your pipe uh, diameter and connector to know how to connect it. But as it stands right now, I could just simply plug it into my, um, well, to mix. Uh, holes outside or the hose connection outside on one side, plug in the hose uh, fittings on the other side, everything was tight, not leaking, and I, it could stop and sustain the pressure from uh, the main water system. You only have one button, which uh, doubles as a pairing button. You hold it for five seconds, you pair it like any other Zigbee device. Again, Zigbee Bridge Pro, that's what you need. Video in the corner. And uh, you can also toggle this manually. But the secret source of this device, apart from enabling and closing the water flow, is the ability to measure how much water goes through, which is gonna help you to judge how much water you need to dispense to save your plants. Unfortunately, that's not the case in UK, 
and I wish they sent me a device that allows me to extract the water from outside and maybe make a weather good enough for cycling because it's been a while. The last thing I need to cover is this. This is a magazine and it's orange and it contains four AA batteries that you slot in. And I think that he took a design principle from SwitchBot Lock Pro. Check the video in a corner to understand that these things are pretty cool and this is how SwitchBot did it as well. And I kind of like this magazine because it allows you to quickly swap the batteries around and this should last quite a bit. Once connected, the two main usage modes for this, apart from triggering manually, is to either dispense it based on time or dispense it based on how much water went through. Obviously, with time, it's easy. I'll take a stopwatch, it will count the ticks, it doesn't matter, it will do the job just fine. But my question was how accurate it is at dispensing water and letting it, you know, because at the end, you're going to pay for this water and you want to just dispense enough and have control over how much you're spending. And this device definitely allows you to do it. So I've tested it. I took a 10 liter bucket and filled it a couple of times to verify whether my consecutive fillings would be actually accurate to what bucket indicates. And it was mostly accurate. I'd say accuracy of this, it's about five to 10%, which is honestly enough because if you're just doing your garden, then a litre here or there, really, realistically speaking, is not going to make that much difference. And while testing, another thing I've noticed, which is, I guess, kind of useful feature is that if you open the valve in here, but you forget to do the valve manually, meaning that no water is flowing, after around uh, 20 to 30 seconds, the device will notify you that something's wrong with your water flow, meaning it's probably closed, and uh, it knows that no water is flowing. So this is very, very useful. My last test for this device was to actually uh, see what happens when I do this. Because at the end of the day, you want to know uh, whether you should use any other protection in case you run out of the battery or you lose the range on your device, etc., etc. So I started to run the water pull out the battery and unfortunately didn't close the connection, which I was hoping it's gonna do. Meaning that you all have to monitor for the battery use carefully, especially when you're using this. This should last a watering season without any problem on these batteries, but just bear that in mind. Another thing that I would strongly recommend you if you're especially relying on stuff that isn't built in programming like timers and dispensers, because if you just have all the things that's gonna control it over the cloud and your a message going to get disrupted when you're supposed to close this, then you might end up in a situation when this is constantly dispensing. So when you're building your automation, set schedules, because schedules are written on the device, and set something, for example, like every three or four hours, make sure that the valve is closed. That way, if your automation fails, then you know that the the worst case scenario, you're gonna be dispensing water for three hours and it's not going to end you with a massive bill. It's a little bit annoying that uh, there is no safe uh, failure on this and uh, I'm definitely gonna feedback this to Sonoff to let them know that that would be ideal. Enough of this, let's talk about this. This is the new range of Sonoff Zigbee sensors, just like others that I've covered, and it detects the moisture. And it has two probes in here, which means if you're gonna place it on a flat surface, as soon as those two prongs are connected with the water surface, then you're gonna get a notification to your mobile phone. That's all it does, it's very easy. How to test it? Like that. It's not very tasty, but definitely my uh, app just light the lab saying that it's wet. But if you watch my tech drop, you're probably wondering about this, because uh, that got me wondering, because there is another a magnetic probe that attaches to this, and I wasn't 100% sure how to use this, uh, because you could kind of loop it and make a closed loop, and that makes absolutely no sense. I mean, one of the things that you could possibly do is just uh, make a loop like that, connect it to your sensor, put it over your neck, and then you have a leak detector for the time <laughs> that you need it most. <laughs> okay, jokes aside, there isn't really much else to this device other than it uses the beefier battery, CR2477, which means it's gonna last probably around a year, maybe more, because this device mostly sleeps unless there is a leak. As the surface of the probe is slightly concave, it will help you guide all those drips and it should identify when there is a drip quickly, with the only disadvantage being that you really need to be precise where the water is dripping, which is not always easy to identify. So this has always been a problem with this device, in my opinion, because the surface in which they kind of like discover where the water is, 
it's difficult. It's difficult to put them in place. But if you know, or if you have the leak before, and you just want to make sure that this leak isn't happening, then you know exactly where the water was leaking, and that device will help you uh, monitor for the, for example, whether the repair has been successful, or prevent further leaks from the same spot. And this isn't expensive, so it's less than $10, and you can definitely get a couple of them scattered around the water outlets in your home and sleep in peace because water damage can be incredibly expensive, even the small droplets. As I was playing with this before the release date, I honestly didn't have a clue how to use it. I thought this is some sort of extension to connect multiple sensors, but turns out that solves one of the problems I've mentioned that is present with these sensors, meaning increasing the area of detection. Because what you can do, you can just connect that magnetically to the sensor itself, and now entire length or even circumference of this uh, wire becomes your detector. As soon as that braided cable becomes wet, you will notify your sensor that, uh, well, there is a leak and there is a water and you should do something about it, which creates interesting opportunities because you can fence off various areas using the length of this. I think this is 1.5 meter and create a, a leak zone that uh, as soon as it's populated with water, uh, you'll get a notification. The downside of this method is that this braided cable obviously will take a little bit more moisture to detect the water and it will remain moist for longer than this sensor. So the cooldown on this before detecting another leak is going to be much, much uh, slower. Another cool aspect of this is that you can daisy chain these, meaning you'll be able to have multiple areas that you can monitor with a single sensor. This is actually pretty fun. This is the point in my video where I usually pivot from Ewelink and try this in different settings, but unfortunately I wasn't able to connect this to my 2 Zigbee hub, which I was really surprised because usually devices from Sonoff, I mean, I wasn't able to connect this, I was able to connect this. Um, Usually, uh, devices from Ewelink are cross-compatible to Tuya, meaning other ecosystems as well. I know for a fact that you will be able to pair it to uh, Alexa devices with a um, uh, Zigbee Hub, but you will only get access to on and off feature. You won't have access to flow control. So that's slightly disappointing, but some of outlines that on the website. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to run this again, but I'm going to do it with my Zigbee to MQTT installation in Node-RED and play with Node-RED and see what I can do. But there is a couple of other Node-RED related videos I need to release first in the build up to this. Trust me, trust the process. I have a brilliant video for this. Okay, guys. So if you're interested, uh, you can start automating your garden thanks to Sonoff. Links to these products are in the description as always. And also, as always, I do not have a posting schedule. Things change. I get delayed because of silly issues. Get Zigbee. Bridge Pro. Uh, so if you want to get in touch, the social media links down below. You know how it works, I'm not explaining that. And I'm definitely going to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.